business, nothing personal on Capital 100.4 FM. Seven minutes past eight on Tuesday, the 20th of August, 2019. It's time for Straight Talk here on Startup Capital with me, Penny Pangetti. Joining me in the studio this morning is no stranger to the show or to the station, UN Resident Coordinator to Zimbabwe, Mr. Bishop Parajuli, who is leaving, relocating. <laughs> Bishop, I think that's the best way to describe it, relocating. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We want to spend a little bit of time uh, this morning just talking about the work that you've done, some of the highlights uh, for you, and perhaps um, in terms of the future of our relationship with the UN as a, as a country, what we can look forward to. And then we'll end off with um, a little bit of a talk around your time here, what you've loved uh, the most and what you'll miss, uh, and uh, perhaps where we can find you, what part of the world will find you uh, as you go on your travels. Welcome, Bishu. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Penny. Thank you very much for having me. It's always a great pleasure to be here at Capital and also to talk to you and and, and to share some of the perspective. And uh, Zimbabwe has been home for me and my family for the last five years. Uh, uh, We have had a great partnership with uh, government. We have a great partnership with uh, civil society, media, uh, and citizen, and at the end, our heart has been how do we help Zimbabwean people? How do we improve Zimbabwean people's life uh, to to promote core values, uh, improve life, democracy, human rights, and and as a partner, UN system? How can we really give best to Zimbabwe? That has been the core focus of my attention, and it's been really pleasure. Everyone has been nice, as I said. I'm not moving away from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe would always remain in my heart all my life, uh, a remainder of the life. <laughs> but uh, sure. but, uh, but uh, it's a wonderful country, wonderful people. Uh, it's been delighted. I'm, I'm lucky to have been posted here and work with everyone. I want to thank everyone for the great friendship, cooperation, and, and support to the UN system. I'm just a part of the UN. Uh, leadership team and 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 uh, my team is all highly dedicated we work hard uh, you know and 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 we work in a best way with everybody else uh, uh, to to do the best to bring the best of the UN and etc so thank you very much Zimbabwe is a wonderful country and I really 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 want to see it prosper people have a improved life and, and a vibrant uh, economy and a vibrant democracy where freedom of the speech, assembly, and, and life and everything is protected. Every kid are in school. Everybody has a good meal to eat and, and Zimbabwe feeding Africa and beyond. And maybe even helping other countries who needs help uh, from Zimbabwe. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly the hope for all of us uh, here in Zimbabwe. When you are winding up uh, your tour of duty after a five-year stint representing the UN Secretary General in in Zimbabwe, and you had quite a tall order. Uh, You had quite a tall order there uh, leading the work of uh, UN agencies in the country and the overall UN development and humanitarian support to Zimbabwe's national efforts. You can be part of this morning's discussion by calling us live in the studio, sending us your messages on 0717-777777. You can all also follow this discussion live on Facebook at Capital KFM. So before we proceed to the main topic of today's interview, uh, Bishu, today is World Humanitarian Day. Uh, please tell us actually what this aim, this day aims to highlight and its uh, relevance to Zimbabwe. You know, all over the world, the humanitarian workers, they give their soul, they give their life, and they put their passion in helping others. And, and the key focus of the World Humanitarian Day is uh, precisely to celebrate about the humanitarian uh, workers' contribution. But uh, moreover, for, for this day, the emphasis is on women humanitarian worker. Sometimes women face more challenging uh, situation compared to men in these difficult locations uh, for various reasons. Uh, but in spite of that, the passion, the commitment, the, uh, the contribution is, uh, is no less. And, and absolutely uh, great uh, leadership uh, uh, is done across the world. And, and the history behind uh, the celebration of the old humanity day begins with, uh, if you remember, some years back um, in Iraq, uh, 
uh, one of the senior leadership of the UN was killed together with many others, uh, uh, many others, and, and, and it began from that. Uh, and and uh, it's, it's adopted by General Assembly. And uh, coming back home in Zimbabwe, in the last five years I've been here, uh, you know, three years uh, of drought, uh, of flood and cyclone, humanitarian workers uh, join hand to help others. Uh, in fact, uh, what I've seen in Zimbabwe, uh, aftermath of the cyclone Idai, is the passion, commitment, and s sincerity of Zimbabwean people itself uh, uh, to respond to those affected 270,000 in Chimanimani and Chipinge areas. I mean, personally, I have been there like five times in that area. Uh, many of my colleagues have slept in that village, uh, have worked uh, you know, long hours. We don't talk about uh, eight to ten, uh, five or yeah. uh, uh, etc. So it's it's a passion, it's a commitment, it's a sincerity, and 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 we don't look at you know who is who etc. We look at who needs help and who needs what help, and and that's the that's the passion, and that's what uh, is we are uh, celebrating on World Humanitarian Day. So when you've been doing a role in a, you know, in a challenging place like Zimbabwe for five years, um, there are different ways in which you can assess the work that you, you've done. And, you know, I'm sure there's ways that you do it in the organization and so on. But how do you assess it for yourself, your stint here in Zimbabwe? Um, did you think, do you think you did a good job as UN resident coordinator? Well, let me put it this way. I have given my very best. Sure. And I have given my very best uh, to, to, to help the Zimbabwean people. Uh, but of course, while working and helping people, we have to work with the government. Sometimes people feel maybe differently why these guys are working with government, etc. But there's no other way the multilateral organization like UN work. I mean, our role is supporting government. We are not driving uh, the agenda. We are behind the agenda or sometimes bringing universal values and, 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 you know, those issues to, to, to bring it uh, uh, into the Zimbabwean platform and, and promote that with the government, etc. So my general sense is, you know, always what I do is I give my best and let others decide how do they feel about it. And, and, and I'm, I'm pretty satisfied because, you know, I have, I have, I have given what I can, and I have done what uh, what what uh, I can do. And in fact, I have to tell you, it, I have engaged in some of the most sensitive area during my uh, years. And I, my tactic and strategy and diplomacy is working behind the scene rather sure. than right up front and being confrontational. And and that is the only way you can move forward the UN agenda and values because we are partners, and 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 you can't have a uh, uh, you know, card before the horse, and and that is, and 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 I will let Zimbabwean people decide. Compare what I have done compared to past uh, my colleagues or future colleagues, and etc. But also, you know, times are different. Uh, yeah. There are there are scenarios are different, and so so I think it's also uh, important to look at from these angle. And I think if you look at some of the things which we have done, uh, you know, during these wars of drought, we have brought uh, and work with partners to help uh, the Zimbabwe, not a single person gets hungry and he starves. Uh, we have make sure to uh, promote every children going to school. We have make sure during the time of cholera, others uh, vaccinations are being put uh, in time of crisis like cyclone and flood, we have reached out to every corner to assist every individual. We have been engaged in democratic uh, uh, areas such as election issues, uh, promotion of human rights, promotion of peace. Uh, we, have, we have brought in a huge engagement into gender-based violence issues. Uh, one of the most comprehensive programs have been launched in Zimbabwe to, uh, to address uh, uh, you know, GBV issues. Uh, and also, I would say that, you know, we have joined in force together as a UN system to deliver as one. And, and so thus increasing our efficiency and effectiveness uh, and have, have been a trusted partners uh, uh, of the government and the development partners. Uh, 
and uh, to to achieve the support and and and, and various goal we have created a vision I really wish uh, we didn't have to go through some of these repeated uh, drought yeah. or other thing, but that's beyond us. Uh, but the important thing is we reach out to do what we need to do. Right, and you are doing it well. Uh, I say that because, of course, you've received several accolades and recognition of the work of the United Nations as, as Zimbabwe, and uh, you recently received award, uh, an award from the president in recognition of your work in response to Cyclone Eli. Tell us a little about, uh, about your work, the UN's response to that humanitarian crisis that was caused by Cyclone Eli. Well, uh, the day of the cyclone, uh, I wasn't in the country. I was mm. out, uh, in fact, uh, meeting my families after a long time. And uh, I cut set my visit and, and came back uh, to, 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 to lead UN response. Uh, and the night I arrived, I had uh, several meetings. Uh, and then early morning at 5 o'clock, I drove to Chimanimani. And we assessed the situation and we looked at it how best we could. We had, you know, World Food Program, uh, faring helicopter, taking various most essential medicine and foods. Uh, we had colleagues uh, looking into how to prevent cholera because there was a challenge across the border. Uh, you know, WHO, UNICEF, and other uh, partners, uh, Ministry of Health working together. Uh, vaccinated 400,000 people in one week. Wow. Uh, and, and there was, you know, uh, camps set up for people uh, to, 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 to relocate it. The school were brought in back. Um, now, w going forward, you know, various partners working with the World Bank and UN System, African Development Bank, uh, you know, supporting in recovery efforts. Uh, so I would say the world has been generous. The development partners uh, have been very kind. And I would also add that uh, you know, there has been huge generosity across Zimbabwe from international community uh, to help meet uh, either the cyclone or other types of humanitarian responses. So my, 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 my take is anything uh, uh, we are recognized or so is, is, is a contribution of the UN system. It's not sure. me as an individual. It's, it's, we are non-political. Uh, are political and it's purely humanitarian. I think, uh, and if uh, you know institutions like ours are appreciated, uh, it's a recognition on, on people. It's nothing, nothing to do with you know personal or anything. And I would also say, uh, you know, particularly this 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 uh, recognition on Cyclone Edai was a part of recognition for various other people, other organizations. Individuals, so I'm humble and honored the UN was recognized uh, uh, for our contributions. Uh, but there's no need to be complacent about it. Yeah. We are committed. We will continue to be committed. We will continue to do our best to reach out to Zimbabwean people from every corner, and we continue to uh, stress we are non-political. We follow humanitarian principle. Anyone needing help must be provided with help. Non not based on party or religion or ethnicity and et cetera. And that's our core values. So, so, so we appreciate, uh, uh, you know, recognition, acknowledgement of our UN work like anybody else yeah. uh, you can imagine. Uh, but this is on institutions. This is, this is uh, beyond individuals. And, 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 and I think, I think uh, one needs to see it from that angle. Thank you. Sure. So we've uh, talked about several different issues, Bishu, of your time here when you've come and had conversations with us here. We've spoken about uh, issues around climate change. We've spoken about empowering women. We've spoken about disaster response. Uh, and a big issue that we'll continue to talk about is the issue of climate change, which has become something that we've um, had to start looking at seriously. The issue of drought is something you've mentioned. And then we had, of course, Cyclone Idai and the flooding that happened as a result. What do you think think um, the, key role, the, the key role the UN is playing around building our capacity as a nation when it comes to our disaster response, uh, as well as our own response when it comes to humanitarian crises? You know, I remember Zimbabwe over 30 years back. Mm -hmm. Zimbabwe had a vibrant agriculture, and, 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 and it used to feed Africa and, and beyond. 
And, and there is no reason Zimbabwe cannot go back to its uh, original uh, status. Uh, uh, the sad part of it has been is, uh, yes, maybe there is uh, increased uh, climate change effects happening, but that's also happening because um, we have not adopted uh, to the changes taking place. And, uh, uh, and, and, and those droughts, another thing, used to be there also in the past. Yeah. Uh, you know, I spent five years in Botswana uh, in the early 80s, and, and, and four of those years were drought years. Wow. And Zimbabwe had great crops, although, although it had. So I think, I think the, uh, the key to the success of this is accepting the climate change is there to stay and then see how do we really adopt it. And, and adoption element comes from a multiple uh, areas. One is um, uh, the whole issue of irrigation, because a lot of uh, you know, uh, farms are, are rent fed and et cetera. So we need to really seriously make a change there. Second is what we also need to do uh, is, is uh, rent fed crops uh, uh, and shift from maize to uh, you know, millets and sorghum and et cetera. And, and those are the original food of Zimbabwe. Sure. I mean, it's, uh, you know, outsider who brought maize into the country, although, uh, you know, we go into comfort, uh, uh, change in urbanization, we go into bread and other things, but, uh, but these things are, and then finally, what I would also say is, you know, as part of reform in policy and et cetera, um, we need to make sure the landowners have uh, uh, have have security in the tenure, yeah. etc., and 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 write policies there so there can be more investment into it, uh, and and these things need uh, urgent action, not not slow process. And and I like uh, you know uh, His Excellency President's uh, uh, the mantra of open for business and 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 changes some of the economic. Uh, changes in policy so that there can be more investment and more engagement. So Zimbabwe need to help uh, bring that element of engagement and trust uh, in, in, in legal uh, side so, so people feel secure. Yeah. Uh, Zimbabwe, I can, I can see, can invest themselves. I mean, you go back to Ethiopia, look at all that investment in Ethiopia has been happening is because Ethiopia, not by outsiders so much. So, you know, the diaspora can be a turning point to help Zimbabwe come out of these things. And, and, and the beautiful climate, the beautiful, you know, uh, country as Zimbabwe is. So I, uh, there, is a, there is a need to speed up some of the efforts in these areas so, uh, of investment, policies, and, and, and security, but uh, it's moving on. I'm very glad to see that realization, frankly. And, and we must also bear in mind, you know, uh, the whole economy and, and politics has been stagnated for so many years. Yeah. You can't expect change overnight. I mean, it's just been a couple of years, less than that. Uh, the, you know, the process of change has happened. So, so there should be a patience from all sides. But if there is a good efforts uh, done internally, there will be a huger level of appreciation and recognition, and slowly the transformation can take place. I believe truly so. Sure. So patience on all sides. That's really important. Uh, there, if you've just joined us, this is Straight Talk this morning on Startup Capital with me, Penny Pangetti. In the studio with me is a UN resident to coordinator to Zimbabwe, Mr. Bishop Parijuli. And he's ending his five-year uh, stint with us here in Zimbabwe. He's uh, relocating, as he's described it. And we're talking about his tenure, some of the key issues that he worked on while he was here. If you've got any questions uh, or comments that you would like to raise on this morning's discussion, please Call us live in the studio, 717 Send us your messages on that same number as well. Or you can follow this conversation live on Facebook. That's at Capitalk FM. You mentioned, Bishu, when you were describing the work of the UN, how it is premised on humanitarianism. So people getting help when they need it, uh, being apolitical, and just focusing on dealing with the needs at, um, at that time. 
And often when we hear of the work of the UN, um, it's, uh, you know, stepping into situations where, you know, perhaps countries are struggling and they need assistance, but also focusing on development work as well, making sure that, yes, we'll deal with these issues responding to crises as they happen, but at the same time, empowering countries to be able to stand on their own two feet and do what they're supposed to do as a nation. In terms of five years, five years is quite a short time. A lot of work has been in, uh, been done. In terms of development, uh, development work on that side, how do we fare as a country? And in terms of the future, what steps can we take to make sure that we are taking our own development into our own hands? Uh, good question. In fact, you know, the first time I landed in, in Zimbabwe on the 14th of September 2014, wow. uh, on the 15th, uh, I was at a meeting jointly with the Office of the President uh, beginning our engagement of uh, strategic partnership focusing on development. So we identified uh, six areas uh, in terms of helping Zimbabwe moving forward. Uh, um, the, the you know, improvement in agriculture um, and, and uh, food security and nutrition, uh, uh, various areas of service delivery, um, HIV, AIDS, gender issue, um, and also governance and capacity building uh, and uh, and the and the and the area of poverty reduction, uh, and we uh, must say in the last four year, uh, five years, if I look back, uh, uh, the 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 the, um, the partnership we have with the development partners and and engagement with the government, we have yearly delivered over a four hundred million dollar uh, program across these areas. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned HIV and AIDS is also one of the uh, key area. Um, uh, and and there has been a lot of work continuing, but how you can also look at it is if that support was not there, where would it be? Uh, uh, like, you know, 1.1 million people are receiving antiviral drugs daily. Yeah. Uh, think about it, uh, uh, you know, f 10, 15 years back when the HIV was 30 percent and people house to house used to have this challenge of funeral almost every day yeah. and orphan and etc now that has been cut so that is development and and also uh, various other areas of work uh, uh, unfortunately some of the challenges have been is the changes in element have have you know sort of uh, threatening our 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 gain on development uh, but but every day you feed a kid, uh, and that kid goes to school, learns. That is development. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's difficult sometimes, uh, you know, to separate what is humanitarian, what is development. Yeah. For me, saving life is humanitarian, but that's also development, uh, because otherwise you don't have a humanity to 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 develop. Uh, so so. Um, um, so going forward, I mean, our our stress is always primary focus is on development, and and if you will remember the whole sustainable development goals, seventeen goals, hundred sixty nine uh, outcomes, and etc. That's what we are zeroing into uh, going forward, and I would say the the vision Zimbabwe, the second republic, has created, uh, achieving uh, middle income by thirties, uh, embraces all these elements. Uh, and some of the uh, effort put forward in the TSP uh, does bring uh, a must of those aspects. Uh, and, and that's why we fully support that uh, initiative and, and embrace it. Um, and, and what is really important, uh, you know, in this time of transformation and economic uh, reform process is protecting the most vulnerable and, 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 and preserving uh, the development gain being made and 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 prioritizing in those areas and 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 making sure uh, the kids don't fall out of a school uh, those getting antiviral drugs and etc don't miss that and there is a good nutrition and food and support available for them uh, and health care remains a priority uh, etc and uh, and, and and also uh, you know unnecessary expenses uh, um, are are cut down uh, 
because the budget is limited. Yeah. Uh, so so these are these are important. So so our stress going forward as UN will continue to be is, you know, supporting the most vulnerable um, and 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 supporting um, the element of peace, uh, supporting the element of you know, food security, uh, human development, uh, and governance, uh, uh, including promotion of human rights, uh, peace. Uh, at the end of the day, if there is no peace, there is no development. Yeah. And, and really fundamental. I mean, you could look at many countries in the continent and, and beyond, uh, you know, the situation of conflict, and they have gone back many years back. So thanks God, Zimbabwean people are peace-loving. They are uh, peaceful, and 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 uh, mm, you know we got involved a few years back with the um, JNU in supporting the constitution, working behind the scene, uh, and and many politicians, the leaders, they know about it. Yeah. So we want to be a trusted partner. We want to help Zimbabwe to set its vision and priority. And, and towards a sustainable development goal while continuing to uh, uh, address the urgent humanitarian life-saving needs so uh, you know the process of progress can continue. I'm glad you mentioned uh, Vision 2030 of becoming an upper middle economy country. And th- this one is an interesting one because you did talk about patience on, on, on all sides. Uh, many have, uh, you said, I mean, is this an achievable goal? We're also working on the sustainable development goals. How do these things tally together and so on? In terms of that, just that part of Vision 2030, do you see us as a country overcoming the current economic difficulties that we're uh, facing? And, and how do we do that? I mean, you mentioned the TSP, you mentioned the vision and so on. Do you think we're heading in the right direction? Uh, I'll be very honest, Penny. Mm. I think there is nothing which is not doable. I'm a very optimistic person. But what is important is there must be a sincerity in purpose and yeah. sincerity in commitment. Uh, it's not enough we create a vision but then don't work hard because nothing comes easily. Uh, so, so I would say, uh, you know, the signs are possible and you know the whole concern Zimbabwe had also high level of corruption um, and and their effort to cut on corruption um, but but if if there is a good uh, walk the talk it is possible it is possible and 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 what would be really important is embracing every Zimbabwean together uh, every political party is together and, and working together. I think a united Zimbabwe can really achieve a lot. Uh, so, so, so I would say, okay, you know, 10 years is not that a long time uh, to have an uh, ambitious goal of middle-income country. Um, but given Zimbabwe's uh, resource availability in terms of mineral, Zimbabwe's uh, agricultural resources uh, in terms of land, and the water bodies and et cetera. And at the top of everything is the human capital. Uh, frankly, it's doable. Yeah. But it will not come easy unless we work hard, we discipline, we are sincere. Uh, you know, every, every officials from different departments uh, must not look for excuses, but work towards you know, that vision and commitment, not in paper, but in action. Right. So everybody taking their role and taking it seriously. David C. sends us a message this morning and he says you mentioned two important points. The first around policy consistency and for him also the, the issue of the security of tenure, uh, tenure when it comes to land is of importance. He says these two indeed play an important role in the recovery of our agriculture. To what extent or how does the UN assist our leadership to view these as vital things with the view to improve possibly quickly. So he's saying, how do we get leadership in this country to understand that those things are really, really important? You know, we have a project for the last five years uh, with the European Union supporting on land tenure issue. Mm. I really wish we would have progressed much further on that. Unfortunately, it's been slow. You know, to appoint a project manager, it took it one year. Wow. So so I think I think those were the challenges. And and there is a talk, but it's not moving with the speed. And I'm hoping in the uh, in the in the in the new republic, those things would be short caught, and there would be a you know speedy action. So what what I like is is the vision is there now, 
uh, and there is there is an effort to, to engage at a different level, uh, but the bureaucracy across ministries, commissions must play its part, yeah. and and uh, and and it's doable. I mean, a lot of things are not frankly rocket science. Uh, it's 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 a simple uh, moving forward agenda. I mean, look at some of these countries around the world, from where they have moved where. Uh, with much less resources than Zimbabwe. Uh, so therefore, uh, you know, the, 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 the future of Zimbabwe is, is, is great. It's, it's need a commitment. So my appeal is, is and, and as a UN, we are committed to continue work in this area uh, to support. In fact, we have had, you know, many engagement uh, uh, with the Ministry of Land those days and then now within the agriculture. Uh, and, and helping bringing white farmers together to sort out uh, themselves mutually agreed to uh, 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 way forward. Um, you know, sensitive areas we have worked uh, yeah. and, and found, a, found a common ground. I mean, like election, you know, the whole biometric system, uh, you know, we, we supported uh, uh, going forward. I mean, which resulted in over 85% of the voting, yeah. correct? Uh, 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 but we are a partner, as I said. We we are not running the element, and we work behind to really encourage to push the uh, thing, uh, and 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 the party need to come together and work on those uh, sensitive area and make it happen. Yeah, I mean, speaking of sensitive areas, there's a message that's come in this morning, and this is talking about sanctions. I mean, it's, it's sanctions for the last couple of days have become quite topical, with Sadak saying they're coming together in solidarity with Zimbabwe uh, against sanctions. We, we cannot develop as a country without re-engaging with the international community, and, and, and a big issue around that is the issue of uh, sanctions. You mentioned, of course, that the UN is apolitical, and, um, you know, those issues of politics, countries kind of need to figure out amongst themselves, but in terms of the impact that it's had and and how it will affect our development going forward, what's the UN's stance when it comes to the issue of sanctions? Well, you know, this element of sanction is one one member state to another member state. Mm. So my appeal is the member states to talk together and find a common ground to resolve it. And, and moreover, uh, you know, you have ambassadors uh, among these countries. So it's not that... Uh, that difficult to to work out and 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 find the common ground um, and 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 uh, resolve it. Now I I I do see the challenge sometime some of these you know concern uh, puts uh, in different way. But but I think I think I remember I remember you know the statement coming from His Excellency the President at the very early stage of his presidency saying, you know. They are not going to um, sort of uh, linger around that element, but will commit to engage and find a common ground to move forward, and and take the country, uh, you know, forward uh, in right policy, right program, and etc. Um, so that is the way to uh, to take it forward, uh, and 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 find a common ground. And I, I think, I think it's it's possible, uh, but but you know this is not UN sanction. It's uh, yeah, yeah. It is it is member states uh, uh, restriction, other member states, and 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 our our uh, our encouragement would be is please sit down and talk and kindly resolve it. And there is nothing which is not doable if you really bring good understanding among each other. Right, and I guess that's advice that cuts across a lot of the challenges that we have here in this country, the idea of you know, putting our differences behind us and uh, figuring out um, how we can develop for the future. I mean, staying on that, you know, international relations and re-engagement with the international community, which has been a key tenet of, um, of um, uh, President Mnangagwa's tenure, is around engage, re-engagement with the international community, particularly with the focus on, on international national financial institutions. How well do you think we've done as a country to kind of do the right thing so that we can get back in good books with those institutions? I will, I will share you on uh, my past experience. Mm. I was a resident coordinator in Myanmar. Um, one week before I landed, the, the country had one of the worst cyclones in the world, 130,000 people killed. 
And that country was receiving the lowest amount of aid, both development and humanitarian in the whole world. Three dollar per capita compared to fifty eight dollar Zimbabwe. Wow. So I would say indigenous community has been really generous on Zimbabwean people so you know focusing and supporting and providing that attention. Um now I like this you know, the drive for engagement. That is the only way to take it forward in addressing this issue. Uh, talking about IFIs and et cetera, uh, you know, there has been a huge past loan. Zimbabwe uh, f uh, ignored that, you know, those loan, we forget about it and, and uh, it will be forgotten, <laughs> almost. Uh, but, uh, but that's not the way how it works. So if those things were not forgotten and continues to be paid and settled, this problem would not have accumulated to the level it is now. But the glad thing, good thing now is there is a realization to sort it out and pay. There is engagement with IMF, uh, you know, SMP um, uh, program and, 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 you know, commitment to settle the area's payment. Uh, you know, these institutions play a, a great role in development by putting finance up front uh, for countries to, to, to mobilize and generate its own economy. Um, so there is a good promise going forward. Uh, and I'm hopeful that that promise is taken forward. I mean, this discussion began almost three years back. Yeah. Uh, I wish it was sorted, sorted out already then. And, you know, there was a uh, paper on uh, Lima paper, for example, uh, approach, but that fizzled out within uh, you know, several months. Uh, now there is a new new drive to take it forward. Um, and and I'm, I'm really wishing that uh, it gets resolved because this is very important. The credibility of creditors uh, is important for new creditors to join you True. because otherwise they won't trust. Uh, so, so this is an element Zimbabwe need to build on. Uh, uh, credit worthiness, trust worthiness, rule of law, uh, and I think some of the policies and commitment which is being put forward uh, shows that. But we need to rigorously do walk the talk and move forward one by one. And, and it's possible. It's possible, although um, there could be hardship like what's happening on the economic front of this adjustment. Uh, and and, uh, and, and uh, I, I, I sympathize uh, very much. Uh, uh, you know the people's uh, suffering, uh, and and also uh, you know the 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 step taken by government to allocate more funding to the social sector, uh, the international community, the loan partners joining in to help those vulnerable population, um, and also the uh, the passion with which the people have taken this up. Uh, but there's only so much you can do, and and it's very important uh, not to not to go prolonged suffering of the True. people because yeah. otherwise it can you know how much how much can you be resilient yeah. uh, it's uh, i mean resilient is one thing but uh, completely withdrawing is another thing yeah so, i mean, so I mean everything has a, br a breaking point yeah, at some so point that's yeah. how that's how we have to work on to balance it and uh, and work on and i i, I commend the passion and uh, of the of the Zimbabwean people uh, and hope uh, to take the country forward, and I think I think it's a uh, it's a, one of the great example you can uh, give in the in the history of nations. Uh, uh, you know the 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 uh, the, the uh, passion and and taking it forward. So so I'm I'm hopeful it will be uh, it will be soon over and 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 good 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 lesson learned. Yeah. I mean, you've spent a lot of time traveling across the country, interacting with people in different capacities and, and so on. And often when we have a challenge, um, I would imagine this is not just as in Zimbabwe, but across the African continent and other parts of the world as well, where something happens, there's a development challenge and so on and so forth. The idea is the UN is going to be there. They'll step in and, and um, try and deal with the situation. But what I find quite heartening about our country is we've got quite a vibrant, you know, grassroots organizations, people who are not working for recognition, who are doing what they do on a daily basis with very little money. Um, talk to us about that side of things. Perhaps the people that people don't that don't get a lot of headlines, they don't make it to the radio stations, but are doing amazing work and are really contributing to the vision of achieving the sustainable development goals. 
You know, in my eyes comes that vision of that lady who carried a sack of food and walked kilometers and kilometers to deliver it to that cyclone vision, mm. uh, cyclone victim. And, and I visited a number of times, as I said, in Chimani Mani, and I talked to a mother who had lost her house, her husband, and a child, and she was in a tent with, uh, with, with one girl, and which gave me hope is she was starting a day-old chicks and a little uh, visitable garden on the side of her tent. Wow. That is Zimbabwean, and there were people helping uh, in whatever the way, and I talked to several others. They were the same. The kids were, you know, um, going to school. Um, I've seen in Binga to, 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 uh, uh, to some of the other remote areas in Lupani and, and Masvingo, uh, girls and boys going to school without shoes. And I tell you, one school I visited in Binga, my heart broke. Uh, it was a thatch roof um, school and all mud floor, sand, and, and they were sitting on a, on, a, on a plank of wood and taking exam. And I said, oh, my God, look at this passion of these people. And uh, so this is Zimbabwe uh, for you. There is a hope. And, and, and the teacher was there, uh, you know, there were um, uh, mothers coming in to cook food for them. Uh, and you see hundreds of community volunteers uh, um, reaching door to door, vaccinating, helping uh, babies deliver, uh, uh, you know, in rural areas, uh, even to the extent the nurses, uh, you know, um, uh, delivering babies with candles. Some nurses told me those stories. So, you you know, I have a I have a super admiration for these people, and and that was brings us energy and and sincerity to commit and do the very best. Uh, and I, this is Zimbabwe is my ninth country where I have worked. Uh, yeah. I've worked in some of the most difficult places like Yemen, uh, where I I used to go with a helmet and a bulletproof press from my residence to the office. Uh, I've gone to see communities with ministers, uh, uh, even in a you know, life-threatening situation. So that's, that's, that's humanitarian. You, know, yeah. you, you are doing this not because you are in a job, but you have a passion. Yeah. And I've seen that among, uh, and, and the overwhelming support, the uh, Zimbabwean people came in with various things in Chimani Mani and, and, and uh, Chipinge during Cyclone is a great example. So big salute, admiration, and, 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 uh, uh, and honor to all these people. Yeah. Bishop, before we let you go, we have to talk about the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, they have a long history that started off as the Millennium Development Goals and efforts towards achieving um, all of these goals and the work that needs to be required in order to achieve them. Um, we are fast approaching the time when we will have to be assessing whether we've, you know, achieved the things that were set out. Countries have made commitments in different ways and are working towards achieving them. Are they achievable? Uh, you know, as I said before, absolutely they are achievable, but it will not be an easy, easy ride. Uh, same as the Millennium Development Goal, and the Millennium Development Goal, which was said, has led to many country come out of poverty. Yeah. Uh, you know, millions of children uh, who are out of the school, back in the school. Uh, you know, the mothers delivering babies, uh, they would have died and all that. Uh, so a lot of things happen. Um, but what has not been achieved uh, in the MDG is, uh, you know, it didn't encompass uh, the comprehensiveness of people, um, planet, uh, and 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 etc. So so um, and and the SDG brings that aspects, yeah. uh, but but it needs comprehensiveness. And I would say the first year, even before the SDG was ad adopted in in New York by 193 member states, Zimbabwe was ahead uh, in terms of developing its own priority. We got 
parliament engaged, we got youth engaged, we got uh, you know civil society engaged, civil servant engaged, a lot of communication with media, you all help. Um, unfortunately, it's slowed down a little bit, I yeah. must say, uh, in the last couple of years. Number of reasons. One is, uh, you know, it was laid by office of the president. They were really pushing uh, forward with chief secretary. And then it got transferred uh, to, to Ministry of Social Welfare. And then, you know, social welfare, they do a good job and et cetera. But environment, what does social welfare do? And mm -hmm. nutrition and, and finance um, and all these. So it, it didn't fit into the right ministry, frankly. And I've raised that concern. Uh, and, and, and it needs, a, uh, it needs the, the leadership it deserves uh, um, going forward. Uh, but certainly it's doable. And certainly um, it needs attention. Uh, and it also needs financing. Yeah. Uh, you know, the SDG is different on MDG and SDG. Is there is expectation on the S uh, MDG, the external financing, etc. In the SDG, it's internal financing. I know in the last one year or so, we had a political transition that also slowed down the process uh, in terms of going forward. Uh, I'm hoping uh, it it you know it gets hooked into the. Uh, same rhythm and speed going forward, and 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 indeed the 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 the, uh, the agenda 2030 embraces that indirectly from that angle, uh, and 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 many countries are making their showcases uh, uh, in New York, you know, high level political forums, sharing experience, etc. But my appeal is. It should be zeroing on ground action rather than showcasing only in uh, in in uh, in New York. Uh, second thing, I want to also say that you you mentioned about environmental issue before, um, and uh, uh, you know that climate change element, um, and and Zimbabwe right zeroing into that. So you know climate change is part of the SDG element, and the SG now at the. Um, uh, Silent of the General Assembly, there is a summit on climate change, and the SG has appealed to all the head of state. Says, "Come and showcase what you are doing. Yeah. I don't want to hear speeches. I want to hear action. Yeah. What is being done, and how things are improved. How the world can help. What can be the good example, uh, etc. I think I think the nations need to uh, uh, embrace from that angle, uh, and and." It's not that Zimbabwe is doing for anybody else. Zimbabwe is doing for Zimbabwean. And, and that element of uh, you know, internalization is, is, is critical going forward. I mean, the SDG is a platform, a common platform globally uh, for a better world and et cetera. Uh, and, 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 so, and, and in that context of that platform, Zimbabwe need to see uh, how are we doing on those uh, you know, 17 goals, or 169 outcomes, and, and where can we improve? And and so there is a need of that headmaster, or a, right. uh, you know, to 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 to, uh, to drive that with passion and take it forward. Sure. So we can't let you go without asking about you. I, I mean, this discussion is called straight talk, and it always says, you know, we don't talk Pleasure. about personal things, but we will talk about personal things. What keeps you going? You see a lot of difficult situations. You've lived all over the world in places that aren't where you're from. What keeps you going? You know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sincerely, sincerely very committed, and and I am... Uh, extremely positive. In fact, I challenge my uh, families and drive this some crazy because I see positive things on everything. Sure. And and I'm a people person. And uh, you know, I come from a developing country. I come from a you know uh, you know fairly common uh, family background. Uh, I have seen poverty. I have seen hunger. I have seen autocratic system. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and difficulties. I mean, I almost passed my high school in a candlelight, uh, you know, in a, in a kerosene light. Uh, 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 I've seen inequalities. Uh, and I think I, 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 early on, I took this passion to say that I want to do whatever I can to make things better yeah. uh, and contribute. And, and, 
and that what uh, drives me every day and you know what can i do to improve on situation uh, how can i help in the best day and i also feel i'm extremely honored to have the role i have yeah. um uh and and uh, opportunity to serve the united nation uh it is it is extremely humbling i don't take this for granted it yeah. is it is uh, extremely honor opportunity and and uh, you know i uh I I I I, uh, I I share those passion to my children. Uh, two of my children, uh, one is a doctor, one would be doctor, and 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 the eldest one is a lawyer, uh, and and uh, so I transfer that to them uh, to 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 contribute to uh, to the better world, and and uh, so it is it is it is that inner drive. It's not. I don't take my job as a job it's a vocation for me sure. and that's what drives me. Right. And what will you miss about Zimbabwe? Wonderful people. And you know I wake up from my window and I see the sunrise coming in. Uh I go to the highland and you see these beautiful mountains. Uh and I go to the village and I see these hard working people always thinking of the positive thing. and uh you know the elderly mother we are transferring food a uh, cash during this drought program and transfer through this cell phone and they couldn't see the eye uh, the the small letters but they were getting this 5 10 dollar or mm. 30 dollar per month and oh my god i mean this is so amazing it's been it's been home for 5 years i want to thank jimbabwe jimbabwean people for the warmthness hospitality and uh, will miss it but i'll come back again to visit as a tourist Bishop Perry Julie thank you so much for your work as a UN resident coordinator we've had a good relationship with you as a station and we appreciate you always being willing to come and share uh, with your work we wish you the best where you go and uh, we certainly hope that we will see you soon thank you very much thank you for having me and i appeal the media play a very very crucial role and important i want to really thank you and our gratitude for what you are doing to spread the message and 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 uh and the work of the united nations system in zimbabwe thank you again fantastic you. and that's it for straight talk this morning and uh, for the show as well join us again tomorrow at 6 a.m. where we bring you startup capital harare's wake up call 